okay in this session let's understand what do you mean by routing and what are the disadvantages of routing okay so this is a kind of exam oriented question so please make sure this is not a kind of concept that you need to understand but it is a, just an, a, a theory, theoretical question that is that exists in the question paper so it is like what are the <clears throat> what are the disadvantages of routing in an ad hoc network so let me add also the ad hoc network so in an ad hoc network so this is the question so let's understand the routing not in a brief manner but in a in a just normal summarized way so I, if i have a sender and if i have a receiver here so the most probable way to connect this sender and receiver the most probable network device that exists in the computer network is the routers so this is my router 1 router 2 and router 3 <clears throat> and with the help of these three routers i can connect my sender and receiver okay so the infrastructure that exists with sender is completely a different thing and the infrastructure that is with the receiver is, is a complete thing is, is a complete different thing okay but the in between devices is very important right now so i have r1 r2 and r3 as my routers so the work of any router is to forward a packet from one location to another location so a packet if coming from sender then it will forward it to the router r1 and r1 will forward that packet to the R2 here and R2 will forward the packet to the R3 with something called as addressing mechanism and this complete thing works on the layer uh, 3 of an OSI or the network layer. So uh, we, we have IP addressing mechanism and they forward the packet from one location to another location with the help of IP addresses. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, they have something called as a routing mechanism so generally they have th th this kind of diagram uh, not in a specific manner but but in a pictorial way it looks like that so these are these are some of the routers and we have a sender here and if i have a uh, if i have a receiver here if you want to connect them then sender will or the routers will decide what is the shortest path in between the sender and receiver as there are so many routers they will find what is what is this shortest path uh, from a sender to a receiver so they will find it out that this is the shortest path and they will forward the packet from this location to this location and from this location to this and from this to the destinations so they will find the shortest path in between sender and receiver and they will forward the packet from a location to any to the other location okay now basically we will understand uh, what are the disadvantage of routing in an ad hoc network okay i hope you understand what do you mean by ad hoc network it is a kind of personal network that you create for your own benefit just like your mobile hotspot okay so let's understand what are the disadvantages so there are three or four disadvantages associated with routing the first disadvantage is known as asymmetric link by means of asymmetric link i want to say that that if i have a sender here let me let me just write s here this is my sender and this is my receiver and let me have a different color to represent this thing okay so i have a sender and receiver so basically with the help of asymmetric link i can understand that the sender probably know that i have a good communication link so this is the communication link of sender to receiver okay so sender knows that i have a very good communication link by means of communication link i want to say that i have a good data rate i have a good speed i have a good bandwidth i have good spectrum efficiency i have no interference and so many other things so basically your sender knows that i have a very good communication link by means of good communication link it is that i have a good data rate bandwidth spectrum efficiency no interference no noise i can send my packets from my location to to the receiver in an probable way and receiver will definitely receive the the packet from the sender he can guarantee that your sender can guarantee it okay so but the problem is the problem is i cannot the sender cannot perceive or sender cannot uh, cannot have an idea that 
what is the link from receiver to sender okay he can probably know that i have a good link but he never judge or he never have an idea on the link of receiver to sender so maybe sender to receiver it is a good link but he will never have any idea about this link it can be a good link or it can be a weak link okay and it is known as asymmetric link okay i have a good link a sender is probably having an idea that i have a good link and i can send my packet from one location to another location but the same thing cannot be applied to receiver or cannot be assumed for the receiver that receiver is also having a good link it can be have can be having a good link or can be having a weak link so he never assumes a weak or good link okay so this is known as asymmetric link okay this is the this is a problem of routing the second disadvantage of routing is known as something called as redundancy <clears throat> or you can say a redundant link okay so by means of redundant link uh, redundancy means if we have a failure on the communication link so if i have a sender and a receiver and if i have if i have a communication link which connects your sender and receiver so this if this communication link gets uh, gets broken here let me erase a little bit so if oh this is not working oh yeah let's say your sender and receiver is having a communication link which is broken somewhere here so now if this communication link is a wired connection if this is a wired connection then probably the network administrator who is handling or who is maintaining this complete network this complete network who is handling by a network administrator he is probably having an idea he is probably having an idea that there is a failure here in the communication link between sender and receiver and he will probably fix it okay if the connection is wired but now the same problem applies for the for the for the wireless connection if i have a sender and receiver but they are communicating with a wireless channel well basically in this case your network administrator doesn't have any idea that where exactly the link is broken or where exactly the problem is so this is or where exactly the failure of link happens so this is a problem for our network administrator to find where exactly is the point of failure okay and this is known as redundant links so in a wired connection it is easy to find redundant links whereas in the ad hoc network and when probably we are using routing mechanism this is an ad hoc network so if you are if you are using an ad hoc network then it is probably not possible for the network administrator to find the point of failure okay so this is your redundant links now the third problem the third problem is known as interference now again if we talk about a wired and wireless communication then if i have a wired communication link between sender and receiver then you can understand then wire it that it, the wire is made up of uh, electric cables or a kind of cable and inside cables we have electrical signals and when you are having the same cable uh, near to the first cable this is your first cable and this is your second cable so if you are having two cables and both these cables is having electrical electrical current then probably what will happen we call this kind of thing uh, as an electro magnetic interference so what happen is the first cable signals so this signal get mixed with this signal so they will mismatch here and will generate something called as electromagnetic interference so this is electromagnetic interference and this is the problem that exists in the wired connection okay if you if you place two wires consecutively or parallelly then the the signal of first cable get mixed or get interfere with the uh, with the cable or with the electrical signal of the second cable okay this is the problem now 
if we talk about a wireless con connection or an ad hoc network if you talk specifically for the ad hoc network then what will happen is we have we have something called as multiplexing technique and i already told you about this that if i have a technique called as frequency division multiplexing then um, we we provide a specific frequency to the specific user in this manner okay okay now you can see i have placed a kind of gap between two consecutive frequencies so if this is my frequency 1 this is my frequency 2 this is my frequency 3 and this is the frequency 4 i am placing a gap in between f1 and f2 f2 and f3 and f3 and f4 why i placed this is because so that these two frequencies not mixed mixed with each other or not interfere with each other because if i do that then because if i do that then there will be a problem called called as um, wireless interference or simply interference so in an ad hoc network this thing happens if i remove these these gaps from these consecutive frequencies then the frequency and this frequency are going to be overlapped with each other and this portion is known as interference so this is again a problem in the routing uh, in ad hoc network okay and the next thing is going to be or the next disadvantage or the last disadvantage is known as is known as on demand topology now the thing is this is a kind of disadvantage uh, which is also a kind of advantage but if we specifically see the disadvantage then what will happen is uh, if, if, i hope you understand the term topology topology is nothing but a physical structure of a network so this gives you a physical structure of a network by means of physical structure it means how your intermediate devices or the computer network devices are connected with each other to provide a network to an organization so we, we have different types of topologies now if i talk about fixed infrastructure by means of fixed it is known as a wired okay so if i talk about fixed or a wired communication then i have several topologies like ring topology like star topology like bus topology like uh, mesh topology and so on okay we have so many topologies available for for wired communication uh, now but in wireless communication we don't have any topologies like that why is because uh, not in wireless but if you talk about a mobile computing or the ad hoc uh, ad hoc network specifically for the ad hoc network and by means of ad hoc network where people doesn't stand to a fixed location they move probably from this direction to this direction to this direction or in any directions so people are moving from one location to another locations okay so the topology is not going to be fixed the topology is going to be on demand okay because the people because the people are moving from one location to another location so i i don't have any fixed topology okay i have a varied topology or more more precisely if i if i say it is known as on demand topology as people are moving from one location to another location and now all these topologies are having fixed you know fixed diagram for that but i don't i don't have any diagram when we talk about ad hoc network okay because my because the entities or the users are moving from one location to another location so i don't have any fixed topology for that i only have one topology and that topology is on demand topology but now there is a problem and what is the problem you understand that a person or a user move from one location to another location now what will happen is the the person or the or the device on which he is connected the device is having the routing table or the if, if he connected to some wireless router then that router is having the routing table and and probably routing table consists of source destination and hope count okay this is the table that is uh, there in the route uh, in the routers okay so now if a person moves from one location to another location what will happen is the table is going to be frequently updated okay it needs to be updated because he is moving from one location to another locations okay so your uh, your source is going to be changed your destination is going to be changed your um, your hope count is going to be changed and the uh, um, the sequence number is going to be changed and other entities is going to be changed so whenever you move from one location to another location the 
ad hoc network needs that so basically what ad hoc network needs is a frequent updation on the routing table okay it needs frequent updation on routing table whenever you move from one location to another location but this is the problem you see as move as a user moves very frequently from one location to another location in an ad hoc network so uh, it is not possible for a routing table to change in an frequent manner um, because you know both ways it is not going to work so this is the problem and this is the last problem of routing that uh, there is a need of constant or frequent updation on routing table as user is moving from one location to another location so it is not possible to do that okay <clears throat> So I hope you understand routing and its disadvantages and uh, thank you so much for listening to me. If you haven't subscribed my channel, I insist you to please subscribe it. Thank you so much.